When it comes to gardening, there's always going to be problems, but what makes the difference is what we actually do about them. This makes me think of one of my favorite permaculture principles, an old Bill Mollison quote, where he would talk about how the problem is actually the solution. And a good instance of this is what Jeff Lawton talks about also. He would say, you don't have a slug problem, you have a duck deficiency. So we ran into a problem early this year in this raised bed right here. On May 10th, I went around and looked at a bunch of my plants, and I noticed in some of my other raised beds that my brassicas were doing fantastic. The cabbage, the cauliflower, they looked so healthy, good lush green color to them. Then I came over to my brassicas in this bed, and they looked terrible. They looked really sad. They were uh, like wilting, and I didn't understand why. Then I picked up one of the radishes, and on the roots of the radish, I noticed this little kind of pest on it. I found out that this is the garden symphylon. And it's not even an insect, it's an arthropod, but what it does is it really loves the coal crops like the brassicas, things like that, and it attacks the, root, the young little root hairs in the plant. What this does is it makes it so the plants can't really, you know, expand and grow really well, and it just does a huge amount of damage. So when I first saw that, I got initially kind of a little upset, like, man, this is a problem. But then I thought about some of those old uh, permaculture principles and I was like, how do we turn this actually into a solution? So what me and Tuck did was we went online and we learned a bunch of things about the uh, garden symphylon because there's another quote that we love and it's about how the first step to doing better is to find out. So we found out and learned a lot about this garden symphylon and through our learning, we found out that it actually hates potatoes and potatoes can grow well in this location. So we thought, is there a way we can convert this and actually turn a problem into potatoes and actually use potatoes to actually fight this pest? So what we did was on May 17th, me and Tuck came out and we decided to pull out some of the brassicas that were doing really poorly in this bed and chose to plant some potatoes in its place. So we grabbed our potatoes, we decided we were going to plant them in about three rows and I dug about four to six inches into the soil, placed my potatoes in the three rows and then added a little bit of fertilizer and covered up my potatoes. After that, I decided to plant some flowers mixed in with the bed too, just to give it a little added beauty, and then watered everything in. I came out on June 12th, and the potatoes were looking really good. So what me and Tuck decided to do was take some of our own homemade soil, and we hilled it up around the base of the potatoes. What this does is it helps the potatoes to grow stronger, to keep them like upright, it allows more potatoes to be pr produced along the stem of the potato plants. And it also protects the potatoes from the sun. So we went around, hilled up all of our potatoes and just made sure we gave them a nice amount of good soil. Then seven days later we came out and the potatoes had shown an explosive level of growth since we hilled them up. They were looking really healthy, really good and we were excited looking forward to a harvest. Seven days after that, on June 26th, we came out and the bed was basically like, the potatoes had almost come, taken over the whole bed. They were looking lush, they were looking beautiful, and uh, we felt like we had made the right choice putting potatoes in this location. Today is finally the day me and Tuck will find out if what we did actually worked, if we really converted problems into potatoes. That was kind of our whole idea for the thing. I actually already came through and harvested some of these potatoes earlier in the year, like this section here and here and we got some pretty good potatoes, but those were early potatoes I went out and grabbed. Now that the plants are actually finished and kind of dying back, you can see, the potatoes should really be a, a decent size and should be ready to, to be grabbed. You'll notice in here also, I planted a squash. So the squash kind of, I planted over on that side and it's gr grown out of the bed, but it's not now kind of taken over the bed a little bit as the potatoes have died back. So I'm just gonna try to cut out some of the squash just to, make sure I don't damage it when I'm harvesting. I'm just gonna cut the tendrils off, like these right here, you'll see. It won't damage the squash at all. So we're just gonna cut a bunch of these tendrils. You can see it was trying to root a little bit. And then let's go on that side and grab some of those potatoes. So through our research, me and Tuck found out that the potatoes not only are supposed to grow relatively well and not be like damaged too much by the garden symphylon, but it's also supposed to significantly reduce the number of garden symphylon for next year. So not only are we getting a harvest from this section, we're also kind of possibly even fighting the pests by planting the potatoes here. You'll notice right here, this was a brassica that I had left in. It never really had a chance basically. The symphylon were just, they just 
did too much damage. So one thing I'm gonna be careful to do is when I'm harvesting this is I wanna leave the soil in this location. I don't wanna be spreading the soil in other spots and then spread some of the, some phyllin around. Even though they supposedly go deeper into the ground as it gets warmer and they're really out majorly in the spring. So I'm just gonna yank these plants right from here. I'm not even gonna to try to dig around them with a spade or anything. I'm just gonna yank them up and see what we get. Ho ho ho, let's see, not bad. Not bad for the first potato plant. I'll lay them here. A lot of people had ideas on what we should do and me and Tuck thought a lot about them and we might try some of, the, some of those ideas next year if, if we still have this issue again. But this isn't too bad for having plants that were getting decimated to being able to get some actual fresh harvests. Not the biggest potatoes, but hey, we'll take it. And there seems to be a pretty lot of them. We let the soil dry out a little bit too when we're harvesting so the potatoes aren't super dirty. And this is only one square foot. Stack all those, got even more. <laughs> so we planted a few different varieties. That's one variety here and I'll grab another variety right next to us. There's still some more plants here, but let's get that one. We see that variety. Let's grab this one over here. See if we got some nice potatoes in this spot. And me and Tuck really wanted to make this video to just encourage people where don't let a few little problems spoil your whole year. Try to take a different perspective like Bill Mollison says and find a solution within the problem. Not bad. Not bad. Not as big as my potato harvest from a different section, but still pretty good. Keep digging through. So it doesn't look like this variety did as good as the one next to me. And then we still have another variety over here, which has kind of been taken over by the, by the squash. Let me see if I can get this. I have a feeling this variety is gonna do the best because these plants looked massive, big stems down here. Let's see what we got. Let's just pull it up. Oh yeah, <laughs> these look nice. Nice looking potatoes. Decent size on some of them. Really good stuff. So, me and Tucker are gonna go around, harvest the rest of these, and then I'll, I'll show you what it looks like after we harvested all of them. But I'm not gonna take too much time just showing exactly on camera. You can see a few different varieties that we've got like a white one. I'll put the name of that one. Got more of like a gold one, and then like a red one too. So, not too bad from, I haven't seen any gardens in Fala when I was digging through too, which is a good sign. So I guess they really do hate these potatoes. I think this was a good option. And a lot of people gave me some ideas like mixing diatomaceous earth in here. And then some people said even uh, throw cardboard down, throw manure over the top of it, and then let the worms come and then let the wor worms rebalance the uh, soil life in here. So that might be something we do heading into fall and into spring too. Overall, if we have to just plant potatoes in here again next year, that's fine. I could just switch the rows that I planted them in, but I'm real happy with the level of production we're gonna actually end up getting from a spot where in the early spring just kind of felt like, it felt like a loss. Me and Tucker are going to go through, dig up all these potatoes, and I always have so much fun digging potatoes because it's, uh, it's like you never know what you're gonna find. You might get a massive harvest, and then once you see like a couple potatoes at the top, you think there's not another one, you dig a little deeper, and then there's more potatoes, so. I always have such a joy digging up potatoes and they're just uh, such a fun crop to get because you don't know how big of a harvest you're gonna get until you start getting your hands down into the dirt. I think there might be a couple more potatoes in here, one or two, there's a decent one there. That's about uh, the last of them for now. There might be other ones hidden in the ground, but we'll just let those stay in the ground for now. You can see a pretty decent harvest, especially because I harvested about four plants or so already before we even got this harvest because I had to eat some early potatoes. Overall though, I mean, to go from a bed where nothing is growing well to be able to get a harvest from it, it feels excellent. 
and a different section I planted potatoes in. I had a massive harvest. I'll make a video of, of about it on a different day, but we just have so many potatoes that we have to cure and store this year, and it's a great feeling having a, a nice food storage. Overall, me and Tuck really wanted to make this video to encourage everybody that, you, I mean, you're gonna run into problems. That's just the reality of gardening and the reality of life, but to have a different perspective, to try to, to try to convert that problem into some form of a solution and see it from a different point of view is really important. That's why I love that uh, quote from Bill Mollison where the problem's really the solution, you just kind of have to wrap your head around it and just come at it from a different angle. I think that makes everything just a bit more encouraging and it makes you know gardening more fun when you don't get too down about something, you just try a different thing. Because it seems like when one door closes, like we can't plant brassicas here, another door opens. We can plant potatoes and we can use the potatoes to help combat some of the pests. And then once you walk through one of the doors that you opened, you'll realize there's so many other doors surrounding you. So it almost like changes your whole perspective about gardening and just makes the whole thing a lot more enjoyable. We had a blast out here though. Me and Tuck wanted to say that's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. We hope you got something out of it. Little homie was out here the whole time working. He never quits. He's always out here. So make sure you spam some hearts down low for the little guy. He's not a huge fan of potatoes, but uh, we'll have to plant some more carrots uh, heading into fall just so this guy can get some late, late season snacks, right boy? Maybe some of the mochum carrots. Those only take about 48 days. Those are good, good carrots. Me and Tuck also wanted to mention to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab a Gardening is Life shirt, grab a Grow shirt, and be part of the team. And we wanted to send a thank you to one of our new channel members, Kelly Anderson. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here. Uh, me and Tuck always have such a good time out here. We're trying to inspire you guys, encourage you to just keep growing food. Even if you run into a problem, I mean, it might actually be a blessing in disguise. That's seems like how problems really are. At first it seems like it's terrible, but then when you get to look back at it, it uh, you realize you learned a lot from it. I tried to make sure I kept all the potato roots and, every, and all the soil in here because I don't want that issue spreading, but I did notice that uh, on all these roots, I didn't see any garden symphylum. So that's a really good sign. And we're hoping next spring we don't have as big of an issue, but I might just do a whole nother year of planting potatoes in this bed again, just shifting the rows because uh, you can't complain about a nice potato harvest. We had a lot of fun. We hope you guys did too. James and Tuck will be back to you again real soon. We out.